watching yeah, again. Just... Thank you. Thanks, mate. And I've already pressed the recording button. So, oh, all good. Okay. So, do you want me to record it as well, or you're happy to record it? Yeah, I'm already recording it, so it should okay. be fine. Fantastic. Thank you, mate. So, let me just move that out of my way. That's okay. All right, and I'm going to share my screen, which I already am doing. Okay, can you all see that? Okay. Yep. Yep, why regional property investing makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, fantastic. And you're recording. Well, look, everyone, thanks firstly for your patience. We love technology when it works, don't we? But it's very frustrating when it doesn't. And I think we have expectations. But that said, I'm excited to talk about this topic because to me, I'm a great believer in following gut instinct and regional property investing, when you actually start to unpeel it and dive in a little bit deeper, it really does make a, a lot of sense. And so the goal tonight is really for you to go away empowered with some knowledge about the facts of what really is actually happening in our own backyard. And so what I'm going to cover off for you is I'll talk about the Australian property market because um, that's an interesting term, the Australian property market, that in and of itself. What the research is telling us about regional, the trends that are impacting regional investments at the moment, local markets to watch. There are some incredible uh, opportunities right now. And in fact, how to spot the next boom town. I'm gonna to provide you with some case studies. And I'm gonna leave you with a question, is regional for everybody? So very briefly, those of you that were not in our first session last week, um, what I'm gonna let you know about is a little bit about me. And I am, who, am, who is this bloke? Well, I'm a father of two, I've got two boys, a 20 year old and, a, and an 18 year old, one second year university, and the other one is in year 12 at the moment. And I'm a cancer survivor. I had prostate cancer six years ago, and I'm the advocate of a men's uh, health initiative uh, which uh, Suvid is now part of, which is called Saving Brothers. And in fact, we're very passionate about getting men to be proactive with their health. And I'm going to be taking this initiative also to the subcontinent, to India. I'm very passionate about India and making sure that men are much more proactive around not only their mental health, but their physical health. I was like Suvid, funny enough. I was, well, I don't know, funny enough, but I was a mortgage broker for just over 18 years. And I chose to become a regional property advocate or an expert in this space because I, I started to learn. I went through a divorce myself. I was in a very long marriage, 22 and a half years. And I had a number of properties which I thought were going to be my superannuation. And at the end of it, I decided that, well, after being divorced, my properties got sold and I had to make some decisions. And so the things that I'm going to be sharing with you are things that I personally I'm not prepared to, uh, to shut up about. And they are firstly, that regional property investing does in fact tick all the boxes, that it's always about research, research, research. And I'm constantly fighting the war against media misinformation. And of course, if you follow mainstream media, I will, will certainly leave you with a thought. And that is the Herald Sun and the Age newspaper, for example, are not research. And they just, it's clickbait, big journalism that often is um, sorry, someone's just, yeah, just make sure everyone's muted. We had some feedback coming through there, guys. Uh, thank you. And, and places like The Age, The Herald Sun, the mainstream media is not research. And all they're about is headlines. And those headlines are often very incorrect and are sensationalist. But interestingly, right now, what we are finding, someone's still, here we go. Uh, one of the most Google questions at the moment is the how will coronavirus affect prices? How will coronavirus affect prices? And people certainly really want to know. I mean, that we're all everybody. I think that's a, it's a it's a it's a question that everybody's asking. The other thing that I wanted to talk to you about is that when you think about the Australian property market, there is no Australian property market. In fact. Australia's made up of thousands of property markets, all got their own ecosystems, their own economies doing their own things. So what happens in, in, at the federal level, level in Canberra, very often has, very, other than tax implications, has very little impact on what is happening in local markets. 
So I refer to regional property investing as the holy grail of property investing. People often ask me, Phil, is this what you're doing? And I say, absolutely. I'm also practicing what I preach. I'm buying properties in regional Australia as well for my retirement. I'm 53 years of age and I see it as a fantastic way to generate income and capital growth for my future, as well as providing income for my sons uh, when I pass this earth. So to me, one of the, there are three key things to think about. And the first thing why I think uh, regional property investing makes great sense, or why I call it the holy grail of property investing, is its affordability. So capital cities, for typically, you're not going to get, would you agree, Super? you're not going to get much for $400,000 these days? No. Not really. And whereas you can buy a home, a house, bricks and mortar, anywhere from say 150,000 to 250,000 in regional Australia, and you can get a rental yield starting from 6% with very, very low vacancy rates. Typically in the capital cities, the vacancy rates are around about 2.4, 2.6% at the moment, particularly since a lot of properties that were Airbnb came back on the market. Whereas in these strong regional economies, you, you'll typically find vacancy rates somewhere between one to 2%. And you also will get great capital growth. And again, that's not something that's well known out in the mass media. For example, most people in the mass media would be thinking, well, the market is Sydney and Melbourne. Again, most people probably aren't aware that uh, say Geelong and Ballarat in the last five years had better capital growth than uh, Melbourne, for example. So why pay attention to regional? Well, let's look at some stats. 61 regional towns across Victoria. Remembering that in the last year, most capital cities and most suburbs, not all, but most, were actually either on a, in a plateau situation or what we would call a holding pattern with no growth or maybe even had dropped a bit. So I think it's quite incredible that this is all from RP Data Core Logic, who report every auction result in Australia. 61 regional towns in Victoria had 10% or more capital growth in the last 12 months. In the last five years, Newcastle, Orange and Wollongong outperformed Sydney. And as I mentioned in the previous slide, Geelong and Ballarat had better capital growth in the last five years than Melbourne. A lot of people aren't aware that some 52,000 Aussies have migrated from cities to regional areas in the last three years. Those of you that perhaps saw on Channel 9 News uh, exactly three weeks ago tonight, Bernard Salt, who is Australia's most respected demographer, in fact, was talking about this very exodus of people leaving capital cities and moving to regional centres. And what we're finding also is that the cities with the virus under control have a much higher confidence. They've got more activity and as in, in uh, regional, uh, as in uh, property to, uh, transaction activity and lower vacancy rates. Interestingly, in June though, capital city rents fell. So they declined by 0.7%. Whereas regional city rents actually increased by 0.2%. And I can certainly tell you that I, I could quote you plenty of examples across, particularly because we're in Melbourne, across regional Victoria where rents increased significantly. I mean, Portland was one example in the last 12 months, rents increased by 11%. So also one of the things that we've learned is that 82% of first home buyers are hoping to get a bargain property after COVID and that 50% of those plan to buy in 2020, uh, 2021. 20, so it would be fair to say you've seen yourself that with first home buyers, they've got some in incredible uh, government incentives at the moment. Yeah. And in including uh, the federal government's initiative on the 1st of January, where if you borrow more than 80%, you will not pay lenders mortgage insurance. Yes, for citizens. And, and in a lot of the, those cases, what we are seeing is if people are buying in specific areas, then sometimes they, instead of putting money from their pocket, by the end of the transaction, they are left with a loan and money in their pocket. Wow. Because they can getting up to about what in, in regional areas up to $45,000. 
Yeah, that's correct. So forty five thousand cash is what they yeah. can get. Twenty thousand grand plus twenty five thousand for the home builder, and Which, then obviously they can borrow ninety five percent. So that forty five thousand covers more than the remaining five percent, anyways. And and remembering that's forty five thousand dollars after tax. Yep. Yeah. And if you had to find that forty five, it probably is really more like sixty thousand gross. Uh, 60% of these first home buyers have said that they would consider a regional area to save dollars and improve their lifestyle. Now, one of the things I'm always about giving you examples of areas worth having a look at. And these are some of the areas that I uh, have been looking at and some of the reasons I'm looking at these areas because I'm a big believer that I, I talked to a fellow, in fact, just last night, I like to give very, very recent examples. A fellow was referred to me by a real estate coach, a friend of mine. Uh, he runs a program on uh, Facebook and, and uh, LinkedIn called Ask Andy Anything. Andy Reid, a really good fellow. He referred a friend of his to me who'd been actually looking at buying a house and land package in Brisbane and he was quoted $577,000. Now, remembering earlier, I said to you that you can find houses in regional, good, strong regional locations anywhere from 150 to say 250. So rather than buying a house for 577,000, potentially, I've, as I've explained to this fellow, you could be buying two properties. So you're de-risking because you're buying across multiple locations and possible across, possibly across different states, which is also a, a smart thing to consider, particularly when we're starting to build a portfolio and we're faced with issues of land tax. Another thing to think about is that there is less volatility compared with capital cities. Capital cities, you tend to find prices go up and down. I myself had a beautiful home in Kew prior to my divorce. And then one year, I remember when things weren't going great, there was talk that our prices dropped by between 10 to 15%, but then they bounced back quite quickly. Whereas you find that they're more robust in regional areas. So strong, diverse regional economies, they just tend to be just you know, nice and steady. Another thing that we've witnessed, why I think regional makes perfect sense, is that the governments, state and federal governments, are pushing some of their departments out, or out into the regional areas. ASIC is an example, GovHub. Uh, you've got, if you look at what's happened in, say, Morwell, uh, if you look at what's happened in Albury, if you look at what's happened in Geelong, they are all examples where the state government has set up WorkSafe and other types of government entities to, to help those, those areas bounce back. And they bounce back beautifully. The other thing is, why I reckon regional makes sense is agriculture, food. These are really, really good uh, indicators of why I believe these areas have incredible opportunities. The other opportunity that I think is that what we're finding is COVID is, it's, well, it's revealed to us that more and more people are feeling they want less stress in their lives and they want to be in a position to pay their loan off sooner. And a regional property with a much smaller mortgage enables that, particularly because I'm sure, Sue, you'll agree, paying principal and interest enables your customers to continually de-risk by building equity into their property and paying it down. Yep. Another thing which I love is that people can get into the market with a lower deposit. In other words, you can get on the property ladder sooner or if you've got your own home, you don't need as much money or you could get Suva to access some available funds, create a redraw, and it just means that you can continue or start to build your portfolio much sooner. The other thing is what we have seen, and I talked about that exodus before referring to Bernard Salt, the demographer, is that more and more people really have realised, I don't necessarily have to work in the city. So people have realised, and their employers as well, have realised we don't necessarily have to have our staff in the city working for us. And in fact, 70% of people uh, in companies, it's been reported that through COVID, they've been either, 70% have been either equally or if not more productive. 
So more and more people are certainly starting to look for that sea or tree change. They want a better lifestyle, family friendly locations. I don't know about any of you, but I don't particularly like sitting in traffic for long. And having gone on my way down to Geelong uh, on many occasion, going down when I've come over the Westgate Bridge and looking at that traffic bank back to Point Cook and beyond, well, I don't know about you, but I, I, I would think you'd probably get to a point. One, I know you're used to it, but B, you probably don't enjoy it. And there's a lot more things you could do with your time. As I said, first home buyer affordability. I'd have to say for me, being a regional property buyer's advocate, my greatest competition in the market right now is the first home buyers. So I promised I would give you some ideas of some areas that I'm really, really enamored with. In other words, that I like. And, and to hear more about some of these things, you could certainly check out my podcast, the Philip Robertson Property Podcast, where I go into more detail and often Terry Ryder, who writes hotspotting.com.au, he's my most regular guest on the podcast, and he's considered one of Australia's most respected property commentators and a completely independent. And one of the areas that I particularly like, and these are areas that I've been buying properties for for my clients recently. One of them is Albury Wodonga. Got a very diverse economy. ASIC have got a head office there. There are three Defence Force bases, excellent hospitals, including in Wodonga, the uh, cancer centre, great infrastructure, plenty of agriculture and viticulture, rental yields over 6%, and houses typically around 250,000 on 800 square metre plus blocks. And in fact, um, I'll come back to it in a minute, but I'll talk to you about a subdivision where we're about to do up there. Latrobe Valley, believe it or not, if you listen to the mainstream media, going back to what I said earlier, which is I talk about the war on media misinformation, well, what's happening there is uh, the way, if you believe what they said, when you started to, when we heard about the decommissioning of the Hazelwood power plant, the way the media reported was, oh my gosh, the Latrobe Valley's doom and gloom. However, what they didn't report was that the decommissioning is actually a five year process and that uh, over a thousand jobs have been since, since then have been created. Uh, there's a $530 million Gippsland rail upgrade. There's $2 billion worth of defense going on down there. There's an undersea cable from Gippsland to uh, Tasmania worth around $3.1 billion. There's various government packages worth approximately $530 million. And they've got great transport infrastructure. Uh, it's, very, it's very affordable. They're, again, like most regional centres, there is a very low supply of houses. That's the problem for everywhere at the moment in regional Australia is uh, real estate agents are lacking supply. And that lack of supply is actually forcing prices up. So capital growth. Uh, rental yields again, six plus percent. Shepparton's another area we've been buying it uh, getting recently. I, in fact, I own property, which I'll show you in a minute, in Shepparton personally. Great infrastructure. In fact, Shepparton's renowned as the food bowl of, of Victoria. They've got a number of infrastructure projects, very diverse local industry with uh, agriculture. Uh, they've got median house prices sitting at 285,000. And again, rental yields starting from six plus percent. A couple of uh, hot spots that I like as well, one is Portland. Portland is in Western Victoria and typically the median house price there is $255,000. I mentioned that rental returns were up 11%, at sitting at an average of 6.1%. They've had 9% capital growth in the last year and vacancy rates are amongst the lowest in Australia. They've got a really strong, vibrant, diverse economy. Remembering it's close to the Great Ocean Road, it's close to South Australia where the wineries are. And prior to COVID, big cruise ships actually uh, dock there. They've got the largest hardwood chip export uh, globally. They've got $2.1 billion of multiple wind farms, $100 million of road upgrades and aquaculture worth some $73 million. Now, another area is Maui, again in the Latrobe Valley. Now, it's interesting, people have this snobbery you know, uh, about property. So a lot, of, a lot of people like to go to a barbecue or a dinner party and they like to talk about their property in cool suburbs. 
But I caution you with that. And the reason I caution you with that is I remind you that buying property is a business, not about whether it looks good. You can look good in your own home or in perhaps in the car you drive or the clothes you wear, but property is about fundamentals, not about bragging that you've got a property in a, in a cool suburb. You know, there's plenty of people with properties in cool suburbs that are potentially uh, either having to tip lots of money in to have that property in a cool suburb, and typically they're not following good fundamentals. So the thing about Maui, whilst it's not a cool suburb, the median house price is very low. Median house price at 210,000, rental returns average 6.1%, and how's this? Capital growth in the last year, 12%. Again, I remind you that Melbourne was actually either going flat, no growth, little growth, or, or in fact, actually dropping. So that's an incredible outcome to have 12% capital growth when we're now uh, in a market that was just starting to come out of the doldrums. They've got a very lo diverse local economy around agriculture, natural resources, coal and mining processing, fossil fuel power generation. They've got a great train connection to Melbourne, plenty of schools and heaps of sport and recreation. So I'm gonna take you back up to the border of New South Wales Albury's on the, some people often ask me, oh, where's Albury, where's Wodonga, which is which? Albury is on the New South Wales side of the border and Wodonga is on the Victorian side of the border. But people tend to talk about it as, as one, Albury, Wodonga is one community. So here's an example of a house that I bought not long ago for a conveyancer client of mine. It's a three bedroom house. When I inspected it, I went up to Albury myself the day before the lockdown shut, when they shut the border. So I just, at the last minute, made a, a, a mercy dash across the border. It was listed for 269. I waited about three or four weeks before I put in an offer and we negotiated it down to 254, 750. We're getting rental income at 310 a week and my client's getting a 6.3% return. Now, before I get to my property in Shepparton, here's another example. I just bought another house in Albury for one of my clients for 217,000, advertised at 225. And with that one, it's an 803 square meter block. We're gonna spend between 12 and 15,000 doing some cosmetic renos, including an up, a bathroom upgrade. And the rent at the moment is 285 a week. 285. So by spending another, say, 15 grand, so that house I was 232, then our return is now going to be over six, about 6.3%. 6 but the kicker, here's the best part. Because of the size of the block and where the house sits on the block, it's going to enable us to do a subdivision and we're going to build another house on the back. So for 217,000, at a 6.4 or 6.3 uh, gross return, that's an absolute mozza. So that's a great outcome for my purchaser. Now, this is one of my properties and those that were with us last week would have seen this, but I bought this house in Shepparton in January this year for 257 and a half thousand. For me, it was quite a strategic purchase because it's very close to the Goulburn Valley Hospital, which is going through a lot of upgrades at the moment. The renos I spent with 12,886. The house owed me, in other words, all my costs. I got an independent valuation from Option. I got a building and pest inspection. I paid for title insurance and my renovation, my stamp duty, everything I've spent on it, the house owes me 286,351. Now my rent to a doctor initially was 295. Uh, the doctor didn't want to pay more rent and that was fine, doctor left. After my renovation, I was getting 340 a week. I still, I get 340 a week. And after all my expenses, I get a 6.4% return. Now the curtains, this is how the house used to look when I bought it. So you can see there, the curtains are pretty ugly. That's an old uh, split system. It's very dry in Shepparton. So you get cracks and they were cracks in the, in the, uh, in the ceiling. The, the uh, backyard, again, very, very dry. The soil was also uh, not very conducive for, uh, for plants. Uh, you can see it's a very, very basic house. It's just a very basic house, three bedroom. That was the old gas heater. The, um, again, more cracks in the walls. 
that was meant to be a feature wall, which is pretty, uh, well, not very, very attractive, I wouldn't have thought. And again, in the front yard, you can see, not very pretty. So after the renovation, I painted it in an off-white. I didn't personally paint it, but my painters did for me, which is a neutral color. That's where the gas heater used to be. Hallway, of course. My bathroom, or my client, my tenant's bathroom now. I don't have a neighbor on either side. That's the park next door. That's my fence right there. 600 meters away is the hospital. I put in new curtains and shear. Renovation to Sheba, split system. And then what I did, I got my gardener to change the soil. So we've got nice new soil. We put in succulents, really immature little succulents in, in February. And the idea is not much maintenance required in terms of the tenant. Tenant doesn't have to be watering much. So just very, very easy for the tenant to enjoy the property. And by me beautifying the property a bit more, what that enabled me to do was to attract a really lovely couple and their daughter is my tenants. They actually already lived in Shepparton, but they wanted to be closer to town for her school. And the tenant actually engaged my gardener and pays my gardener to come and mow the lawn every three weeks, which is super. And that's how, the, that's how it all looked when we first started out. So here's another thing to think about. So how do we spot the next boom town? What is going to boom next? Well, let me start with perhaps what you should not do. I would suggest if you were to listen to the, to the mass media, they rarely cover markets outside of Sydney and Melbourne. And the thing is, by the time they actually do, it's far too late because property prices have already risen. The other thing to be aware of is that most of the journalists who write about property from the mainstream media live in Sydney and Melbourne. So what to do? Look for the clues. I'm a great believer in looking for clues. Infrastructure, jobs, projects, diverse industry, population growth limited supply. A really, really important one is vacancy rates, either going up or down. Now, an example, a really good example was Sydney in 2013. It had been going backwards, as in prices going down for some 10 years. However, a couple of great clues. Rents were rising and vacancy rates were dropping. And they typically are precursors to a price rise. You with me, Sunil? Been a long day, brother. Yeah. That's it, my day starts at 4.30. We love it. Okay, <laughs> so do you listen to the experts? You, I think it's so important when you're looking at things like this to work with someone that understands the market, who's deep in the research every day, and that's what we do. So I work closely with Terry Ryder, who's my most regular guest on my podcast. He tracks every suburb in Australia. We're about looking at getting into markets before everybody else. I'm really excited right now, quite frankly, because, because most people are in lockdown and including that includes other buyers, advocates and agents. I'm lucky I've got my team across Australia on the ground assessing properties. In fact, I did a video last week on my LinkedIn profile. You're welcome to have a look at that or connect with me on LinkedIn. And I talked about the fish that John West reject. And my purpose in that video was that when I send my team out who are either pest and build inspectors, so they know what to look for or their minimum qualification of a carpenter, they report back to me about houses. And one of the ones we looked at recently, for example, in Shepparton, it was listed for 239,000. Now it was a pretty little property. At least it looked that way on the internet. But when my colleague got up there, he said, Phil, no, I wouldn't touch this one. Uh, they've done a really bad job on the re-stumping. And I reckon within 12 months, the walls are gonna start to crack and you'll be having to spend a bit of money. And that's the benefit of having people in the field that work with my team who know what they're looking for and know what the warning signs are, but, it, but conversely know where the opportunities are. And it's not uncommon for me to have my, uh, my property assessors on a call with my client when we're excited about a particular house, we'll have a discussion and we'll talk about what it would cost to do a potential upgrade or renovation. Um, so here's the next thing to think about, is regional for everyone? Well, you, what you could do, it is for you if, you want to buy in the best possible locations for growth. 
There is always an opportunity with a booming market out of thousands to choose from. And we buy all over Australia. We're not just in Victoria. We're not just in New South Wales. We look at South Australia, WA, not so much Darwin at the moment, and certainly Queensland. You've got to be ready to work with professionals to make it happen. And here's the thing, you work smarter, not harder. I outsource a lot of functions in my various businesses because I know that I'd rather pay professionals to do a better job than me, particularly because I'm not, I'm, I can't be everywhere. And that's the beauty of engaging our team. And we understand that numbers like yield and vacancy rates, not the tile pattern or cupboard handles is what matters. <coughs> Excuse me. So I would say if those things are important to you, then you can get emotional and get excited about the numbers and what's possible for you. But you only should get excited about tile patterns and cupboard handles, for example, when it's your own property that you're going to move into. Another thing which I love is from, quite frankly, most Australians can afford to get into the regional market. And I think that's fantastic because one of my personal greatest passions is to help as many Aussies get to a point in their lives when they've got cash and assets for retirement. Because one thing I can assure you of, there will come a day, whether you're self-employed or working for someone else, that there is every chance you'll get your last ever paycheck. And so whatever you've accumulated up until that point has got to last you through your golden years or your retirement years. And possibly, hopefully you want to leave a legacy for your kids as well. And I certainly do. And that's one of the reasons why I buy regional properties. I've no intention of selling them. I keep them in a, an investment trust. And therefore, I will not trigger a capital gains event. And I'll, in a, I'll then pass them on when I leave this earth for the next, next part of my journey. I'll pass them on to my two sons and they'll have cash flow. So before we take any questions, I think one of the really important things to think of is right now there is so much less competition, but it will change. Once lockdown, it'll be like going to restaurants. Everybody will want to go to restaurants and cafes again, and you'll find that a lot of people are going to want to get back into the market. So I would be suggesting the following for you. Talk to Suvu. He knows his numbers. He knows you personally. He knows how to help you and he can talk to you about what your options are. I talk sometimes quickly, maybe I need to slow down because I get excited about it. I get excited about it because I know what's possible. And the thing is, the more I'm involved in doing this and helping people, I get more and more excited purely because it is so achievable for people without stress. I think quite frankly, COVID is teaching us some incredible lessons. People are so over negative hearing because it means that you've got to tip your, you've got to tip money into the deal. You've got to find the shortfall. I know it so well because I used to be one of those guys selling off the plan properties for 10 years. So I know that space extremely well. And I also unfortunately used to get the phone calls from clients saying, mate, it's either not going up in value or the, the rent's not covering it and I'm having to, I'm having to find too much money and, it's, and I'm finding it stressful. This is a vehicle that will not do that. So typically you'll find when you buy regionally and we would do the numbers with Suvid, you will typically find that it will be in fact cash flow positive. So Suvid can talk to you about that. You are always welcome to contact me, but I would always say talk to Suvid first. The best way to be in touch with me is for Suvid to do an in email introduction at a point when it makes sense. There's probably little point in talking with me until we know what your actual financial capacity is. And at that point, I would then say, get Suva to do an email introduction and I'll talk it through with you. And I'm always happy to jump on a call with you and with Suva as well to set up a strategy. So Suva, I'm going to put it to the floor. If anybody has any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. You heard it, guys. Uh, it's open for questions. If you have any, please go ahead. Thanks, Phil. Uh, great presentation. Uh, thanks for 
sharing your thoughts with us. Uh, it's really nice. Uh, this is Paul. Uh, I'm a friend of Suvet. Um, well, good I, day, Paul. Yeah. That's, a, that's a lovely photo of your family, by the way, mate. That's oh, what it's all about, trust me, as a father of two men, young men. Good on you. Uh, I probably missed this, but uh, you, I think you did cover what, what is the impact uh, that COVID will have on the property market. Um, yep. I, you did have a slide on it, but I, I wonder if you could elaborate on your thoughts and course, what the experts yeah. in the market are saying. Okay, so last week's presentation we did was actually called Investing uh, in COVID-19. I, I think the impact it's going to have on the metropolitan market is potentially going to be a challenge uh, in, in pockets. Not everywhere, but I don't think, I think what's going to happen is what I would call the mortgage belt. So the outer ring suburbs of Melbourne, I think will get hit hard because typically they are the areas where people are highly geared. In other words, they owe a lot relative to the value of their properties. And I think we are going to see some pain in those areas. I think we'll see some pain in probably many areas in middle-class suburbs as well, because there's this uncertainty around people's employment future. However, again, and in fact, one of my one of um, one of my podcasts, if you do, you, if you listen to podcasts, uh, the, 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 there was one not last week, the week before, which is called the herd mentality. Do the opposite. And we do go into detail, Terry and I, about what's going on with COVID and why we think now's a great time to buy. I think regional Australia, Paul, is much more resilient because there are industries such as healthcare. There are industries such as government services, industries such as agriculture. So think about things associated with food, uh, things, social services, GovHub, so government infrastructure that are moving out to regional areas. We're really, re uh, what I'm personally experiencing, when I ring agents up at the moment, like agents have very, very little stock, not only in the city, but certainly more so in regionals. Because remember, regional Australia is still able to transact. You're still able to do an inspection. So what you're also finding is people from Sydney, like remember in a Sydney investor, when you say you can buy something for 200 and something thousand, it blows them away. Because to buy a house in Sydney, you're probably looking at 900,000 over a million. You don't get a lot. So when you say, well, for the same money, they could buy three or four. This is the thing. People from Sydney in particular are buying houses, Paul, sight unseen. It's just purely about the numbers. I know that because the agents are the ones that tell me that. Over time, I've developed some lovely relationships with agents who, in fact, they just ring me now. They know my formula. They know what I'm looking for. And the, one of the most lovely things I enjoy in my business, I'm always, very, I'm always very respectful of people, with people, because I always think, you know what, that's someone that I may need to do business with for the next 15, 20 years. So there's no point in burning a relationship. But they come to me with opportunities that are not even on the market. And that's another reason why what you're seeing in the property market is, is, is only a bit like the iceberg. You know, you are, most of the icebergs underneath the water. And it's the same with property port. So there's a lot of transaction going on off market. So what you're seeing on realestate.com.au and domain is only a part of it. And remembering you're not hearing about it in the media much about what's happening regionally. So I really honestly, in my heart of hearts, think it is a great time to buy in regional Australia. There is a lot of competition for limited stock. There is a lot of competition now for uh, people to rent. So getting tenants is, is not difficult at all. So to me, I think there are areas, uh, and in fact, I've got, if you went and listened to my podcast, you could find different episodes where we talk about COVID. Uh, investing during COVID as well. So I think that would be a great way to learn more. If you wanted to have a further discussion with me uh, and you feel that there's more that you'd like to learn uh, with Suvid's blessing, more than happy to have a call with you offline. Sanders, just, just on that, uh, with the first session that Philip mentioned about COVID, I've just emailed you the recording to that session for you to have a look at whenever you want to. 
That'll be great. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Suvid. Appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, good on you, Suvid. That's great because that was a great session. Yep. Awesome. Who else has got a uh, question? We've we've got a question in the in the chat room from oh, okay. Shreyas asking have... if Adelaide is a good option for regional yes. investment. Yes, great question. Now we again we talk about that in my podcast. Adelaide's an interesting market. It's now most people actually don't realise that Adelaide's known as the um, oh the Silicon Valley of Australia. And in fact, Tesla has got his battery operation there. Uh, Elon Musk, rather, uh, Technicolor, as in movies, are based in Adelaide. And in fact, the, the, the information that we get back from our colleagues in Adelaide is things go on the market and unless you're in a position to buy quickly, you'll miss out. You also find with Adelaide, you get good value again for your dollar relative to what it costs to buy a property even here in Melbourne. And regional South Australia is also doing extremely well. So yes, we really, really like Adelaide a, a lot. Great question. Thank you. You're most welcome. Uh, I do have another question about regional property. So yes, when we compare uh, the average time to sell, yes. how, how does that compare between metropolitan and regional properties? Well, I think it's going to come down, Paul, to the individual area and when at what time. Having said that right now, I think you would find that the, well, certainly in the markets I'm working in, day on, days on market, things are getting snapped up very quickly because there's little stock. And so, I mean, I find that sometimes it's like, well, Phil, you know, and it's not an arrogance. What's happening is fundamentally they're just saying, look, if you don't want it, I'm going to be able to sell it within 24 hours. So you need to be in a position to move. So I, I would say in the pockets that I'm working in, uh, Paul, things are moving very quickly. It's not like you're trying to sell a house in metropolitan Melbourne where I think you'll find things would be on the market a lot longer. That's not, a, that's not, I'm not giving you a specific example. I'm just giving you a general answer based on our observations of the, some of the markets that we've been operating in, which include, I'm very open about it, Albury Wodonga uh, is one, Shepparton, and Marupna, uh, where else? Uh, the Latrobe Valley, which is a, quite a big area, Taralgon, Morwell, Mowy. Uh, they're just some examples. So definitely things are not staying on the market very long at all. Thanks, sir. Hey, Paul, you're most welcome, mate. No problem at all. Any other questions? Yes, has another question. Is there any government benefit like grants, etc., for in investing in regional areas? Well, there is, but remember that was for building a brand new dwelling. And there would be some benefit, Sue, but I would have thought for your first home buyer. Yep. Uh, in terms of other grants, I wouldn't I wouldn't know of other grants. I, what I can tell you is always you can still with an established property get a depreciation schedule. Uh, and I've got great partners who give my team discounts. I don't take referral fees. I'm not into that, but I get them rebated back to my clients if there is a referral fee. Uh, but I think it's important, again, uh, whilst I don't believe there would be uh, government incentives necessarily for established properties, but certainly um, I would say you'd want to still do a depreciation schedule. We've got another question. Uh, what are your thoughts on rooming houses in regional suburbs? Is there enough demand to let individual rooms on rent in regional areas? It's an interesting question. I don't know a lot about that. I know that they were quite popular in Albury. Uh, I haven't researched them because it doesn't tend to fit the formula that I'm doing because regional boarding houses, you've got to spend a significant, like probably seven, eight hundred in fact, nine up to 900,000 for some of those. So it's not something that I've spent time on. Uh, I, I'm, I'm in a particular market where I look at certain types of properties, uh, but that's not one. In fact, I just bought a house for a client, probably a little bit different from what I normally do, but I bought a duplex that'll give us about a seven, I think it's a 7.7% return. It's a house, it was an old AB Jennings house and the people are moving into a retirement village. We'll rent that for 400. Uh, on the separate title in the rear is a uh, another dwelling that is, uh, it's 8A and 8B. 
and that one's currently rented at 220. So we'll get 620 a week in rent and it'll give us a 7.7% .7 return. And we bought that one for four hundred and seven and a half thousand dollars But as a, as a rule of thumb, yeah, boarding houses has not been my thing. Any other questions, Subit? Not in the chat room. No. Anything else, anyone? Uh, do you think that the the demand for property will still still keep holding now that so immigration is almost at a standstill, and then yep. the immigration flow, which has always been a boom for Australia economically. Uh, that is going to slow down for the next few years. With that yeah. happening, would property still be a, a, a neat thing that will keep growing? Well, certainly I'm only talking, Paul, about regional. And what you find is more and more people are realising that it's more affordable. More and more people are realising that they don't need to work in the city. Companies are now realising that, hey, we can get away with having our staff perhaps coming in once or twice a week and maybe using a hot desk. So with that in mind, uh, companies now or employers are realising they don't need as much commercial space. I think you'll find that the trend will continue. COVID has revealed a lot of things, Paul. People have, real, people have realized, you know what, I don't need to work like this. I'm actually able to work part of my time from home and quite well. Uh, like I said earlier, 70% of people have been either equally or if not more productive since COVID by having to work from home. So I absolutely feel confident that that trend will continue despite whatever is happening with uh, immigration. Um, immigration will come back in, in due course. But certainly, I think you'll find that this will continue to grow. We have another question. Uh, right. What are the challenges or drawbacks in, of investing in regional Australia? What are the challenges and drawbacks in investing? Okay, well, I think in terms of drawback, uh, gosh. Look, I think the, the way I'd lean into that is the challenge like investing anywhere is getting it right, doing the right research and buying in the right location. I mean, I'm buying there myself. I, that's what I do. I do that for myself personally, as well as for my clients. So I think the challenge is getting the right research and getting the right dream, what I call the right dream team around you. That includes Suvid, that includes a good conveyance or a solicitor, potentially a good town planner, a good, uh, build and pest inspector. All of these things are really important. So you can, yes, the challenges are getting the right people and getting the right research and listening to the right people. I don't see a downside. I'm, I mean, I, I'm not Pollyanna. I'm not all blue sky. I think if you do the right things, there shouldn't be any downside. And history has proven that. It's just when you go and what you've got to be careful no matter where you invest is what I call shiny object syndrome. It's also well-meaning individuals who say, oh, mate, why, why, are you serious? Why would you do regional? And then my question to be to them is, well, what do you know about it? So this is, there might be your best friend. It could be the person at work. It could be your, your uncle, your, your spouse. And I would ask, on what basis do they make that statement? Oh, you know, I, I, I just don't reckon it works. Again, I'd ask the question, on what basis do you make that statement? What, what evidence are you relying on? Yeah, I so think you made a good, a fair good points, Phil, with um, all the COVID is not so good, but then in the property market is definitely brought out that um, regional places stand out, they, they stand tall today compared to metropolitan areas. And, and that trend, uh, as you rightly said, will continue because uh, your big corporates are seeing that you can work from potentially anywhere because all you need is an internet connection. Paul, and you're absolutely right, mate. And, and like my partner, she's an example. She, her company is a, a large, they own a lot of big commercial assets around Australia. And she's like all the staff, they've been working remotely. I made, one of my best mates is head of banking, uh, sorry, head of foreign exchange for Bendigo Adelaide Bank. So he goes to Adelaide, he goes to Bendigo uh, every 
probably every, if not every second week. Now he was able to move his whole foreign exchange team within one week to work from home. And so, you know, they're a significant player, Bendigo Adelaide Bank. And he said, like, you know, when, when there's a will, there's a way. And so it's doable. People are realizing, you know what? I don't, I don't want the stress. If I can have a beautiful lifestyle and sell my family home, now it's not for everyone, of course, but what you're finding more and more people are, are seeing that, wow, if I had a house in Melbourne worth a million dollars, and I go and buy something in a regional centre, a re like a Ballarat or a Bendigo, for example, for five hundred thousand dollars, I keep some money in my pocket, or I've got that to invest in. You know, it's a pretty attractive option. And COVID, what that's done is mean enabled us to find things that really are quite attractive. You know, we're, we're really there are. It's not all doom and gloom. I think COVID is actually helping us realign, realign our values and what's important. It will hopefully help us return to balance. And with balance, I think that will support continual growth in the regions. Any other questions? That sounds like a no now. <laughs> I think that I think the silence is deafening, Sue. But you know <laughs> always, mate, that your your clients are your family, and as a part of that, they are welcome to email you, or you you and I speak regularly anyway. And so Absolutely. there are other questions. It doesn't have to be just done tonight. Yeah. So friends, that's been fantastic. You're you're going to stop the recording, Sue. Yep. All right, look, thanks everybody for your time. Stay well, stay safe. Let's hope that this uh, lockdown ends pretty soon. I think the only thing, one of the things I do love in the area where I live, I live in Canterbury, and I, I just love seeing all the families out walking, walking their dogs and the kids out in the parks. And I think that's seeing people exercise. So that's a nice thing. And it's not all doom and gloom, but let's hope we get out of this lockdown pretty soon. So friends, take care. Uh, next week, Sue, we're going to be talking about rent vesting. How about I get the yes, order right? Okay. Yeah, yep. and that's an exciting topic. Again, that's a really interesting one. I'm personally a rent vester. I don't own a home anymore. I just buy properties and I rent in the area I like to live in. So it'll be a great topic. I'm looking forward to it. Have, everyone have a great week. I'm looking forward to seeing you all uh, next Tuesday. Thanks, Phil. Thanks, everyone, for attending. All right. Have a lovely evening, everyone. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Ciao. Thanks.